Okay, guys, let's start because there's a lot of information and so, okay, so thank you so much for coming here. We're going to be talking about um, uh, Salinas rat. Whoever is Mexican, they know what I'm talking about, the rat, you know, my friends, and the biggest one, actually. But anyway, so this is Salinas rat, it's an SMS commanded rat. So this is an effort done by three guys of us, not only me, it's very important to mention that. Uh, Gerardo, Ken, they, they were not able to come for another uh, project, but we are, it's an effort of three guys. So we're going to be talking about the whole process that we took in order to infect an infotainment, the one that you guys have in the right side. Uh, that is, uh, the infotainment is up and running, stand alone. We're going to give a demo at the end uh, uh, of how we can steal SMS messages uh, in here. And, um, and I'm going to give you a copy of one of the book that I wrote. Uh, so I'm going to uh, ask you guys one specific question in Spanish. So hopefully you can uh, understand it. No, just kidding. Okay, so everything started with Carloop. Carloop is a, is a OBD2 OBD port. It's connected into the automobile. You know, when you go to the service, you plug in this guy there in order to do debugging information. So we, we started thinking about, okay, so let's plug this device into the car. Uh, it's pretty convenient. It has a microcontroller from Particle. Basically, you can code your stuff and push firmware updates uh, through the cloud. Uh, and then this is an example of uh, uh, an implementation of socket can so that you can basically monitor uh, ODB2 information. So this is just a one-on-one example of, you know, just sniffing into the car. We were like playing with that one-on-one stuff. And then uh, this is a quick video. So what we did here is we were just connecting this guy, sniffing the uh, OBD2 port and flashing the car. This, this is okay. Is that okay? Okay. So, so it is, this was just the one of one flashing thing, right? So we said, okay, if, you, if we can flash the car, you see, so what, what if don't we try to get into the car and see what else we can do? Because it turns out that only the lights can be controlled through the OBD2 exposed to the car. We said, okay, so let's go inside the car and see what it is, right? So then we started playing with, with this. So. I wanted to ask you guys, who, who of you pair your phone with your car while you're driving? Can you raise your hand? Yeah, right? We all do that, right? That's the, that's the reason that we decided to target the driver in this talk. Because uh, when you guys are plugged with your car, it's pretty convenient. But at the same time, what if the car is infected with malware? And what if we can use the, your phone to talk to our rat uh, remotely, right? Or exfiltrate data. So that was the thing that we wanted to prove in this specific talk. So, why the driver? As you guys know, there has been a lot of effort on car hacking, on, uh, on those guys, really good research on breaking uh, stuff into the brakes, uh, into the echoes, those things, and uh, controlling the steering wheel, that's great. But uh, we wanted to focus on something different, especially, as I said, because it's very convenient to plug your phone into the car while you're driving. So that's why we decided that, based on many people uh, that is plugging their phone in the car, if we can do something inside the car, that can be huge. So we can exfiltrate the data through the SMS. That, mean, that means that, uh, as you know, when, when you're driving the car, those cars doesn't have internet connection. So then uh, how you can exfiltrate the data? Some of the people who are trying to search for open networks while you're driving, but that's going to take you like for probably th three to five seconds to get the open network, and then it's gone, right? So it's, it's not stable. So we said if we connect through the phone, we can do uh, back and forth information with the attacker through the attacker, through the driver's phone, and it's totally stable. So different scenarios that we can come up with is espionage, you know, like you can monitor messages from, from a, a person, uh, like congressman, uh, your wife, you know, if you want to know if she's cheating on you, uh, rental, if, if we can, if, if we can, infect, you can imagine if we can rent a car, right? We infect the car. We rent, we rent a car, we infect it, send it back to the dealer, uh, to the rental office. Then every time someone else drives that car, 
you can be stealing information from that. And that's huge because that's not targeting one person. It's targeting whoever is driving that car, right? So splitting out uh, CD-ROM, uh, turning off the display, we're going to see that in a demo. So many scenarios uh, that we can think about. Obviously, ransomware, like wiping the operating system, uh, denying calls. We can, for example, if someone calls this guy while driving, we can deny calls uh, because we control it. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to set up this guy. The guy that you see right there in the right, we need to set it up, right? So the first thing is we need to buy, uh, by the way, this whole thing car, I, I drive that car. So I said, I cannot test it in the car, so I wanna get a test bench, right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to find a test bench. So eBay is very good option for you guys. So lucky me, I found the, the, the specific uh, infotainment that is in eBay, it's exactly the same that I have, that I'm driving. Uh, this has the information on the side. These are the uh, piggy tails. Those are very important for you guys. So anytime you wanna buy something like that, make sure that you have the pigtails. If you don't have the pigtails, you don't have a way to connect it because it's just manufacturer base. So you make sure to have that and ask for that. Otherwise, don't, don't, don't buy it. Uh, and this is how it looks in the car, right? This is the whole thing. So the first thing was uh, to understand the internals. Uh, this guy runs uh, Linux ARM, uh, free scale, uh, IMX6. Uh, Linux ARM, 32 bits, uh, kernel, memory, display, Bluetooth, uh, JTAG, uh, Renesas, M16C. This is more into the CAN related messages. Um, and it has GPS, of course, and the backup camera. And very important, guys, USB Ethernet. So the USB that we see in the car that you think is just to plug in and charge your, your phone or, or just to, I don't know, plug in for MP3 music, turns out that has Ethernet. That means you have an IP address and you can talk to the, to, to the car. Okay, so the next thing you need to do, guys, you need to find the wiring diagram. If you don't have the wiring diagram, you don't know how to connect the dots. Uh, and the wiring diagrams are only held by the manufacturer. So we were able to find this thing in leak in internet and that helped us to connect uh, all the dots. So the whole thing here is the audio system. The audio system is, is talk to the connectivity master unit. The connectivity master unit is all we need to connect this guy and boot up. We don't care about other components, just the component to boot up this guy, which is the radio, the Bluetooth, uh, the SMS messages. So we connect this guy, uh, it, this is how it looks in the back. It has um, a specific CAN messages and accessory. The accessory, guys, I didn't even know what is the accessory, but I don't know, you guys, what is the access, you know what is the accessory, uh, ignition part of it? Okay, so when you plug your uh, key in the car, right, you do one, one, one switch that turns on, that uh, releases the steering wheel. The second one uh, releases uh, the display, you know, with the, with the lights. That's the accessory part. And then you turn on the car, that's the ignition starting. So for us, we don't have the car, right? We, but we need to have that cable that mimics the accessory so that we can turn on the display. So that's the accessory part that we, we find out here. Okay, so we have everything up and running, uh, and then we have this guy ready. Okay, so then we need to start trying to get access to this guy. So uh, there are many ways to do that. One was via serial access uh, that we found out later. I'm gonna explain you how. And then the second one is, as I said, it has a USB which gives you IP address. You can do brute force into the infotainment, has really weak uh, passwords, uh, and, and it's nothing uh, difficult. But still, if you have serial access or uh, USB connection, that doesn't work because you need to have something remotely, right? I mean, you need to have a way of that the driver gets infected, not that you go to the car, open the car, and infect it. That doesn't work. So then uh, we found a vulnerability, guys, uh, uh, like a one year ago, that it works through the USB. And basically what it does is it exploits the auto run. I'm gonna explain you that in a second. And, and, and we start testing that one. Uh, so see, this is how it works. So when you plug in the USB into the car, it goes and check if it exists any specific uh, event. So it calls what is called gain main uh, uh, instance, main instruction file, it's an INI file. So it's gonna plug the USB and if, I, if it finds the INI file, it's gonna check it. And inside the INI file, it's gonna check for an execute.ini file. Inside that one, it's gonna check, okay, do you have a date, date, date retrieval information command? If it has that, it's gonna call it and basically, guys, this is just gonna receive whatever is in that command line, as you can see here in the bottom, whatever you put in that command line is gonna take it and execute it. So simple, nothing advanced, and that is gonna do a system on whatever you pass, and then you can start executing in, in, the, in, the, in, the, 
in, in, the, in the car, in the infotainment car. So this was the vulnerability that these guys found. Uh, and then we tested, and it turns out that it was working fine. We get access to the infotainment. So at this point, guys, we, we, we said, I mean, should we keep finding vulnerabilities to break into the car, or should we focus on what we can do once we are inside the car? So since it was too easy, as you can see, to break into the car, we decided let's work on what we can do once we are inside the car. Okay, so this is just a quick demo, guys, so that you can see uh, how it works. So basically, what you need to do is, is uh, as, as I said, we have the USB at the, at the top. That USB is the one that you see in the car, right? So then you will go, as social engineering, you know, you go to the guy and say, hey, here is free music or free porn or whatever is your, uh, you know, I don't know. But anyways, you convince this guy, right? Or you leave the USBs in, uh, in the desk, whatever. This guy plug in the USB into the car, and then the auto run that I just described is going to start executing. So we, we take around 30 seconds to pop up uh, just because of this whole process of deciding what it's going to do. And eventually, what we are doing here is just popping up uh, a screen, obviously, to show that it is infected. But obviously, in a real scenario, you don't need to pop up anything. Yes? Is the auto run in the driver or It's in the machine, in the operating system. It, there is a, a library, a dynamic library, that triggers when you plug, on, plug the USB and start handling all the events. From the USB. So the USB has an INI file that this guy is going to read, pretending to update something, but it's a bash script that we can control. Yeah. So this is basically uh, infecting this guy, right? So what is the motivation that we, at this point we said, should we move into attacking the car, the driver, or what should we do? So something very important that we realized, guys, is that this vulnerability was patched uh, by the manufacturer. Uh, and then this, but this specific uh, infotainment doesn't have that vulnerable. It was uh, vulnerable. But then when we, uh, I, I went back and checked my car, turns out that my car was also vulnerable. And even though I have been driving that car for more than one year and a half, so my firmware was also vulnerable. So that makes me think about that why the, uh, it was not updated by the manufacturer. Uh, keep in mind that this firmware is not like Windows updates. You cannot just get the update through internet. So you need to go to the manufacturer, they need to plug a SD card and update your firmware. So, uh, but still, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with what is called um, uh, warning calls. From In US, the warning call is when you get a letter that says, hey, you, we find something in your car, come to the dealership, and we are going to fix it for you. Recalls, exactly. That's it in US. So for this specific thing, I would have expected these guys to send us a recall for this, right? I never get that, and for sure I didn't get that because I have the same car. So I was saying, hey, how many cars might be vulnerable with this specific thing? But these guys just doesn't even care, even though they patched the firmware. So we said, let's do something inside the car so that that can help us to push into fixing these things and treat it seriously, okay? And this is, when, this is a, like an example of the safety recall notice that you might get into your, um, into your house if, if, if your car has some problem. So, and as I said, potential targets, you know, rental cars, if we can infect the car with malware, uh, it's going to be thousands or millions because this firmware is probably millions uh, in uh, driving outside. Uh, you know, it, it, they, are not, uh, they are not updating. And when I went to the dealership, I tell him, hey, could you please upgrade my firmware? And the first answer was, uh, what is firmware? So that was what the service guy told me. Then I talked to the manager and he said, hey, if you want me to update your firmware, First of all, you need to have a problem in your car. Something is wrong with your car. We cannot do anything if you don't have any problems. So I went to another dealership and I said, you know what? You know what? <laughs> so my car, the Bluetooth is not working. He said, why not? I said, I don't give a shit, man. It's not working. Just update my framework, man. And then finally, you know, so you need to do a lot of stuff. So back to the game, right? So we were playing with this guy. So let's focus on infecting the car and see some consequences so that we can prove that you need to take this seriously. So we were playing with the car, and then uh, we lost access to the infotainment because we were playing with the services. And then, uh, unfortunately, we lost Ethernet connection. We lost Wi-Fi connection. So we found a specific uh, blog that there was a UART a connectivity to this guy through, the, through two specific pins. So then we were 
try to get find those guys inside the infotainment, plug it in, and thanks God and Josh Gomez, we got that back. So, uh, so we were able to get access to the infotainment. What we learned here, guys, is that when you're testing a, a device, make sure that you have a backdoor or some way to get in. So you cannot just, you know, start trying your stuff and suddenly you get access and you lose access, you get screwed. So you make sure you always have a way back to, to, the, to, your, to your device, okay? So the next thing is persistence. As you know, we want to make sure that this guy runs every time the infotainment boots. Pretty easy. There is an SMS service running, and it has a specific um, XML file. We just add our rat into the XML file. Pretty simple. Every time this guy runs, uh, it's it going to run our rat. Obviously, it is read-only, but you can remount it as read-write. No issues, no, no, nothing that stops you. Pretty easy. Okay, this is our lab setup. We are ready to go. We're ready to start playing with this guy. We have a U bus parade for the serial access. Uh, we have a big old bone where we compile our RAT. Every changes we do, instead of doing tool chain cross compiling, we just root our, we just use our big old bone, which turns out to be exactly the same Linux ARM version that the infotainment is running. So we compile our changes there. And the USB hub, the USB hub, since we were three guys, we plug this hub, then we have excellent access, all of us, especially for uh, remote debugging, which is very slow through Wi-Fi. Okay, once we were inside, guys, we found this test application. This test application is basically an, a debugging application that the manufacturer left inside this guy. So that helped us a lot because it's full of symbols, and we only need to reverse that guy to understand how to interact with multiple components. It's a test app client that talks to, to a test app server, which has an XML commands, and then you can control the audio, you can control Bluetooth, you can control configuration of the car, Wi-Fi settings, CAN bus. So we were analyzing this guy, and we found the prefix, which is AT plus TMC. So if you talk to this guy through the client, do this prefix, and put your own commands, you start interacting with the car without, I mean, it's going to save us too much time. And actually, we use this uh, for a specific reason, to reset the phone in the Bluetooth, as you're going to see in, the, in a demo in a second. Uh, it was pretty convenient. This is an example. So for example, you, you can see there, you, you have the like AT plus TMC. After that, you have commands to execute. Like, you can see the firmware version, you can see uh, uh, the VIN number, you can see uh, the build date, uh, and of course, you can also control Bluetooth and those things that I'm going to show you later. But this was pretty good for us, very bad for the, for the guys that are living debugging tools uh, in the infotainment. Okay, next thing, guys. So when you're analyzing these kind of uh, things, you need to debug it. You cannot just go, I mean, maybe some ninjas here reverse it, right? But I'm not a ninja reverser, so, so but just, just looking statically. I need to, you know, do debugging uh, information so that I can see exactly. I send an SMS message, I pre we put a breakpoint, I need to see how it's going on uh, to understand every single step. So you need to have debugging thing. But this is, this is um, Linux ARM in an infotainment embedded. It's totally different than in Windows. So the first thing that we got was watchdogs. The watchdogs means that if you stop a breakpoint, after three seconds, it's going to reboot uh, the, the, the infotainment. So we need to find a way to kill the watchdog. The second thing is that we were putting breakpoints in IDA, and it was not triggering at all. Uh, so we, we decided to look at it a, real, a little bit. Uh, and then we found that the service manager controlled all the other processes. And then as soon, it, it will trigger the watchdog. But funny thing is that we can kill that SMS service manager, no restrictions at all, and there is no watcher. Pretty simple. Second thing is via GPIO, you can, we can put a, a, a flag there, and watchdog is gone. That's the second approach. Now, talking about the GDB breakpoints. So we find out that there is an instruction. We didn't know about it. It's called undefined instruction. So the way it works is that it's, this is the P trace code, if you want to look at it. Uh, it's basically pretty simple. So what you're going to do is that uh, in, the, in, in the instruction that you want to set your breakpoint, you just replace that with the on instruction, as you can see in the right side. Once you do that, it's going to trigger a trap. That trap is going to be caught by the application, but since we're debugging it, it's going to stop on us. After that, you just need to revert back the bytes on memory and keep going debugging. But turns out, for us at least, this was the way for us to start debugging services, because this is services. If you are familiar with Windows services debugging, it's a pain. Uh, in Linux, it's the same. Uh, it's not an, as a an standalone application. So this was, this was the way for us to start debugging. So we are ready, uh, and let's start looking into the main component. So the way it works, this guy, it has a JavaScript-based front end, runs with Opera browser. 
It connects to, uh, through web sockets to what is called a multimedia in, uh, unit interface. That uh, unit interface talks to all the components uh, through the bus. Uh, through the phone, updates, backup, navigation, Bluetooth, everything. Then that guy connects to the service manager, which has all the components inside the car. It's, this is a total, like, a world, you know? It has ignition camera, it has, like, uh, video-related messaging, uh, and can DVD. So, so that you guys have an idea, we focus on this part only, but it's, like, huge. We just focus on the part of how we can control the messages coming in, going out of the infotainment, which is just the JavaScript side, MMU side, and the MSG library, which controls this whole thing. Okay, so let's focus on SMS messaging. Let's see how it works. So when you receive a message from this guy, uh, it's, right now it's like a, you know one slide, but it took us like probably three weeks to understand this whole thing. So. You, got, you, you send a message, you right? Like, um, from I am sending a message to the guy that is driving that car, right? The guy is driving that car, receives the message, Bluetooth take it, it calls a blue, uh, blue go service handler. That triggers through the bus, connects to the MSG, which is the Linux library that is handled this specific communication. It triggers the SMS notification callback. Then it stores that message into a SQLite uh, table. Then from there, it talks to the multimedia uh, interface, which is gonna talk through WebSocket to the GUI. Then the GUI is finally gonna display through a JavaScript uh, event. So JavaScript and the MMUI are talking through WebSocket. As you can see here, it's, they are just waiting for the information coming in and out. And once they receive it, they pop up a message into the, into the screen. That's simple, but those are the main components that need to be understood if you want to control it. Okay? And then, sending a message. If you want to send a message out from this guy to the world, like you are driving, you get a message, you can put reply, send message, this guy is going to send a message out. The way it works is that this guy, again, it's just a reverse order. It talks to the MMUI, JavaScript to MMUI through WebSockets. Then, this is like a, a portion of example of uh, JavaScript, how it works. Uh, so basically, you put the message that you want to send. Uh, it sets the state of MMUI. It's like a state machine so that it controls multiple events. You need to put it in a state, in this case, to send an SMS message. You put an ID of the event, in this case, SMS, and just trigger uh, the event. And it's going to connect to MSG component, which is the Linux library, which is called the safe message. Keep in mind this one. Safe message is the one that's going to allow us to use the bus to talk to the Bluetooth and send the message out finally to the guy, whoever is outside, okay? So this is the whole process, receiving and, and sending. So now let's see a little bit very important for us, for, because we said, okay, we understand now how it works. So now I want to send an SMS message to the infotainment, and I want it to respond to me. I want it to my malware to know when a message is being received so that it can trigger whatever I want, right? So the first thing is that my, my, I need to wake up my rat. So we realized um, that uh, the messages are being stored in a SMS uh, database, SQLite, un unencrypted, so you can just open it up. It has some tables, uh, but the interesting ones are the attachment and the message table. So the attachment table is the one that every time you receive a message, it stores the message in that table. And the message table is the one that when you click read inside the infotainment, it's going to store that message into, into that table. That means that if we can monitor the attachment table, we know exactly when a new message is coming to the infotainment, and as soon as we see a new message into that table, we can wake up our rat and start executing what we want, okay? So then uh, there are some limitations when we were trying to do it with JavaScript, because basically, as you know, JavaScript, you need to start touching the screen. It's, it's popping up, so it's not something that it's easy to see. Uh, and it's so uh, discouraging. And also the driver or whoever is the target is going to realize that. So it's not, it's not convenient. Uh, this is just a quick example, guys, that I want to show you. So here what we are doing is, is we have a message being sent through JavaScript. So the message is being triggered in a specific event. So as you can see here, I'm going to be touching different parts of the infotainment, but as long as I don't touch the part inside the infotainment that triggers the message, nothing is going to happen. So I'm touching here, I'm going to different tabs in the infotainment, nothing happens because there is not a trigger right there. But then suddenly, 
I'm gonna, you see, I'm moving to the sound or to, to different places. But then I'm gonna move to a place where a message is gonna be sent out by JavaScript without touching the send button. So we put the, the message inside a specific uh, event. The event is read message. So we go there, we click read message. Here, you see the send button? We are not gonna talk that, touch that button. When we click here, any of those messages, Checking the left side, the message is going to be sent automatically through JavaScript. Check that. The message is sent automatically and is receiving the phone. So this was a way for us to send messages through JavaScript. But as I said, it was there, but it was not enough for us because it was too limited. Uh, it was not easy for us to, uh, to don't wake up the driver. So. We said, okay, let's focus on other, other options. WebSocket is one, uh, and then the MSG or the DDBoss is the other option. So we are trying to find a way to send messages out, but we saw that JavaScript, it doesn't work for us. Okay, so in the WebSocket approach, uh, basically you can put a, a sniffer into the WebSocket, and you can see all the communication going back and forth between the JavaScript and the MMUI component. So that way we can get that information and replay it. So it's, it's, it's possible, but you need to convert this. Sorry, you need to convert this guy uh, from from this uh, information in JSON into C. Use the libraries to talk to the web sockets. It's, it's 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 good, but still it's a lot of work. So the second approach is using the library Linux library APIs. So in the left side you can see all the structure when you're sending an SMS message. We dump it from memory, and in the right side, we start constructing the structures in order to understand how to send a message via C code. It's still, it's possible, but again, it, this is just one simple event. If you want to do many other events, you're not going to keep going, adding and adding more events just to support uh, a specific action. So the final one was DBoss. DBoss is pretty cool because DBoss has all these inf different uh, implementations, which means you have interfaces to talk to the Bluetooth, interfaces to talk to the radio, to talk to the GPS, everything. You don't need to do anything. You just need to call the DBoss interface and method, and that's it. So we started exploring that information, and then we decided that let's go to, through the DBoss approach. Okay, so at this point we said, okay, we have the, the guy that we need, so let's focus on that. So this is something, uh, so to give an idea, guys, what it is, uh, the DBoss interface is exposed. You can see that we can do Bluetooth pairing operations, GPS, navigation, maps, network devices connection, system updates, and the button SMS operations. That means if we are able to understand the SMS operations, we might be able to send and receive messages, okay? So a little bit fundamentals about DBoss, just quickly, it's a Linux IPC mechanism. It's just a channel to communicate information between processes. Uh, it is used by LibDBoss in, in Linux. Uh, it has specific policies. By the way, in this specific infotainment, there is no security policies. We're free to do everything. Actually, infotainment has a firewall that we can disable, and we can talk to DBoss also remotely. Uh, it, it is simple as take some parameters, and you talk to it. It's pretty, pretty simple. So we thought it was great, our feature, but probably not. So then we start understanding the DBoss. The first thing is receive messages. This get message guy is gonna allow us to receive messages, but turns out that this long line is very complicated, which means is that it's a nested structure that the DBoss send um, a command inside the infotainment doesn't support. So we were very happy, we said let's send messages and receive. Turns out that it doesn't support these complex next uh, structures. So same for the other one, save message. Save message, as I said, is to uh, send messages out and also complex uh, structures. So we said, okay, so we need to find a way to, uh, to, to implement a DBoss inside the infotainment. So the DBoss monitor, so that you guys know, is like a sniffer, but for DBoss, DBoss send is to send the messages, but as I said, it is really um, limited. Okay, so we start playing with different different libraries. I'm gonna go really fast in these three slides, guys. It's just a lot of effort by Gerardo, by the way. He spent probably three weeks trying to compile statically different DBoss binaries because we want a binary that supports nested uh, complex structures for us to use it in a scriptable way. But then it turns out that it was not possible very hard. We tried like leave the boss, it was limited, 
This didn't work. We tried GDBoss. You need to compile everything statically. This didn't work. Then we found uh, ROS bindings with DBoss. Also didn't work. Godboss didn't work. Defeat. This is the one that we use. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a demo in a second. This works pretty well. Uh, we use it. It supports the nested structures that I said, but this is a GUI. So Defeat is GUI. So still it works perfect, but it's not scriptable. Okay? So then uh, PyDBoss. Turns out that these guys also run some sort of Python, but it didn't work anyways. And finally, LibDBoss. LibDBoss, these guys, this is the solution for us. Turns out that it supports nested uh, complex structures, as I said, or container, type, con container types. And it has a tool chain created by some guys. I'm going to leave you guys the, uh, the, the links. It's basically these guys created a tool chain specifically to this kind of card. So for us, we don't need to deal with dependencies problems with all those information problems. So we just need to use this tool chain and, and works pretty well. You just define your XML, uh, DBoss uh, introspection uh, information that you wanna call through DBoss and it's gonna work. So here's an example. This example is one of our modules that I wanna show you. It's just called Flickr. Flickr was compiled with this tool in a scriptable way in the infotainment. And it's, it's pretty simple. So you connect to the DBoss port, and you establish a connection to the DBoss, then set up the interface that you want to deal with DBoss. It's called LBDS. It's a uh, video-related uh, um, interface that we use to set the brightness, which basically means uh, you can turn off the display, turn it on. That's simple. But this is the way that finally you run, you know, if you have done some tool chain comp comp compilation. So it's just a way to compile it and ready to go. We have the Flickr ready to use in the infotainment. So we have everything ready, guys. And finally, before the demo, see here is how everything is going to work. So we have all the components. So basically, is this lady uh, driving the car, listening to music, right? She's already infected with the, uh, with the Salinas rat through social engineering. So, uh, sorry, not yet, guys. She was not infected. Now it's infected, OK? So then she, so, so she, she plugs the USB, and then this guy gets infected. Then we do the persistence, as you remember. We put this guy into the services so that I can boot up all the time. Salina Rat is running. Then we start monitoring the SMS database so that new messages are coming. We start executing. Then we launch the sniffer, which is the DBoss sniffer, which is like a wild shark for TCP. It's the same for DBoss. So we put, put the DBoss to start listening in specific events that we know are related to the SMS messages. Uh, and then the test app tool, you guys remember the test app tool that these guys left into the infotainment? So we use that one to reset the connection to the, to the infotainment. So what that means is that uh, we understood that when you, pro you connect your phone to the infotainment, there is a session between your phone and the infotainment. So when we infect the car, uh, that session already happened because this guy is already connected. So we need to find a way to reset that connection so that the, the, the session is established again and then we steal it. Once we steal that session, we can control the whole SMS messaging. That's why we use this uh, test app tool uh, in order to, to steal the session between the phone and the Bluetooth. By the way, this is not needed per se. I mean, we did it because you can do that on demand. Let's say that you have a 30 minutes shot to do this. You cannot wait for this guy to get a message uh, or a call so that you can intercept the session because this is the when you're, is when you're going to receive the, the session. But we reset it on demand so that it gets disconnected and we get the session. But the other option is we just wait and eventually when it receives, it receives a message, we will still get the, the session. Okay, so we intercept the pairing session. Uh, this is a way JavaScript SMS that we saw. Even though it didn't work a lot, it helps. So it helped us as the, as the first beacon because it just wanna send a message out to the attacker, and the attacker will receive the, the phone where the rat is connected. So at this point, we know what is the, the phone infected in a car, and then from there, we can start sending messages to the infotainment, and, and it's gonna start uh, stealing SMS or whatever you want. So this is the whole process, guys. So let's, let's, uh, let's do a demo. So here are other commands supported in the rat. We, we are you know, implementing some of them. Ransomware is just put this guy on, on usable mode, 
and uh, and you can take it you need to take it to dealership it's pretty simple you just remove specific services and you lost connectivity as we did actually we are implemented what we learned so that if you want to fix it you need to go to the dealership uh, to get it fixed and um, this is a test observer that we are running you know this is the debugging tool uh, wi-fi ethernet uh, and the flicker it's just an example so so let's do a demo guys i'm gonna move there and uh, yeah, let me. Okay, let's let's do it here because I think I, I, I don't think I can move the, the laptop. Anyways, let's see. Okay, so okay guys, here I am connected uh, to the to the car. Okay. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn on the Bluetooth in the in the infotainment so that uh, I can pair my phone. So we are here inside the, the, the car in this screen. And in the right side, I'm going to run the famous uh, DBus monitor. Sorry, DBus monitor. Uh, let me just open this. So uh, let me uh, expand it. So here I have a, a specific guy, which is this. OK, this is just DBus monitor. What you are doing here is you are saying, hey, monitor DBus a specific event. The event is called get for the folder list. Why? Because we want to monitor that event only. Because we know that when the phone is connected or disconnected, this event is going to be called. So we don't want to sniff everything, right? We just want to put a filter. It's basically that. So I'm going to just run this guy. So it's ready. It's waiting, right? So now in the left side of the screen, I'm going to start running what is called the, um, the test observer. You remember the test observer that I told you guys? You don't remember it? Okay, my friend, good, thanks. <laughs> okay, so see, we have here the test observer, okay? This guy, we learn obviously after, after doing the reversing that, uh, we need to call it with the disable uh, command because uh, otherwise it's gonna uh, time out. So okay, we run this guy, it starts running there, and it's ready, okay? So right now we have this debugging service. So what we're, we're, what we're gonna do is now, we're gonna query this guy. So this is something that I'm doing here, guys, in front of you, but obviously behind this, this is what's going on behind the scenes, right? So that you guys can see exactly what the rat is doing. The rat is doing the monitor, the rat is turning, running test observer, talking to this guy and querying the, the phone. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, so let's run this guy. Client at, okay? So we said, you remember the prefix, which was AT plus TMC equal? So we're gonna say, hey, tell me what are the phones connected in this car, right? You are in Mexico City, right? You are not in US. You are just the drug cartel boss. So you are waiting for this thing. So I'm just, okay, give me, uh, give me what are the phones connected? It says, okay, so we have uh, three phones that has been paired into the car. That's just per phones. Okay, now tell me what is the phone that is active right now? The phone that is being dro dro driven by the, by the car, by the driver, right? It's right now there. So we said um, 518, <clears throat> and it says, okay, so the one that is active right now, which is my phone, is this MAC address. So then we said, you know what? Reset that connection so that we can uh, as I said, if you reset the connection, when the connection is established again, we steal the session of the Bluetooth and the, and the phone, and then we can control everything. So we said, okay, so for this guy, uh, we do these uh, commands, and then we said reset the connection. So what I want you guys to look at is in the right side after I execute this, 
because in the right side, when we issue the connection reset, in the right side, the device monitor is going to catch that um, new connection. Let's see. So we run it. Let's see here. Anything is stuck. Let me check. No, we didn't get it here. Let me check. 432. Yeah. 80 plus 10C plus 32.1. I think it was this. Oh, sorry. No, this is, uh, let me check the command quickly here. How do you check this? 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, that's the one. Just let me, let me quickly uh, check. Just a little bit. Here. So I'm going to try to execute exactly the same command, um, which is, let me check, uh, okay, I think it's this one. Let's see. Yeah, so it's executing, check. Okay, so now we got the session. So what is the next step? With that session, let's take it and let's steal SMS messages. So we take these two guys. Uh, as you can see, by the way, uh, the sessions, uh, sometimes in this case, you can see it's, it's the same, uh, but sometimes it changed, actually. Or, or, uh, this go, this, but this is the latest one, okay? So let's go to... Um, to my Ubuntu box. In this Ubuntu box, what I have is, uh, I have uh, the tool, you remember the feed tool? This is the GUI, but obviously behind the scenes, we don't need the GUI. We just need the other option to compile it and execute it to, through tool chains. But this is for you guys to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to the infotainment through, through Wi-Fi to the port uh, 3000. I don't know if it is still connected, probably not. No, I don't think so. Let me just quickly um, reset the, the connection. Yeah. Let me check. You can see there. Okay. Yeah. I don't, let me just. It, it's the same. The same thing. Let's see the three. Yeah. So okay. We have connection. And so. Okay. So we connect. To through. We're connecting to the bus. The bus has multiple ports. It depends on the ports has the exposed interfaces, right? So we connect to this interface. We are here, and we are uh, interested on the MSG one. As I, if you remember, guys, this is the one that we are interested. Uh, MSG client, okay? MSG client, as you can see, has all these exposed different methods for us to control uh, SMS messages. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to use uh, the get message list. This me get message list is going to say, hey, pull out all the messages from the phone that you just give me the session. Okay? So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here uh, and I'm going to prepare my message. 
So basically here I'm just copying, you remember those, those two, two uh, values that, values that, I, that we got. Let me, let me get them again. <clears throat> it's these two guys. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna copy this guy, okay, to the, to the command line before, below. This command line, guys, is just to interact with the boss. So these are all the parameters that I need to pass. The first parameter is the connection ID, the second parameter is the context ID, uh, and then we are set. Okay, we pass the second parameter, paste, and that's pretty much it. This is the whole information that we need. We just paste it into the, into the tool. You can see here in the top, connection, context ID, timeout, all are the parameters for the boss. Obviously, during this exercise, we need to realize what are those different parameters, uh, but after that, it's, 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 it's simple. Now, here, this is the great value. This four is the number of messages you wanna get. I put three, for example, but we can put more, right? So what I'm gonna do right now, guys, so that you can see that this is uh, live. So I'm gonna just send some three messages to my, I'm the driver, right? So, but I'm gonna send, pretending that I am another guy, I'm gonna send a message to me, so that you can see it's popping up in that guy. So that guy is receiving messages, and then we will steal those messages. So, so let's say we put, um, Viva, what is, the name of, what is the name of your wife, my friend? No, no, no. <laughs> it's just a joke, my friend, it's just a joke. <laughs> see, I sent this message to my phone, but I don't think it's working. Josh, I told you don't send me anything with bad words, man. <laughs> but anyways, so I don't think it went through. You see something popping up, let me know, okay? But I don't think so. Okay, so let's let's do this, okay? So we said execute here. Let me just, um, this, this display, Jesus, dude. Anyways, okay, we click execute here. Okay, and then when we click execute, oh, shoot. I just need to click in source, and here in source, guys, we get the messages. Latest messages is three messages. You can see here, damn, this is my friend Josh Gomez, a friend of mine. Then uh, here is another message, you know, all those messages. So we just retrieve three messages. If we could put, put here four, uh, we might get, uh, obviously, more, but that's basically the idea, right? So we do execute, uh, and then uh, we go to source, and I think I get another one. Okay, so these are the messages, but what, what we did is now we get the messages from the phone, right? Now we need to send it out. Right now we get it, now we need to send it out. It, I mean, we get it, but this message is, is in the bus. So we need to send it out to the attacker so the attacker can steal the messages. So what we did here is we just create a, a small tool that we are basically uh, parsing these messages and sending it to a, a second, a second DBoss interface, which, which is the one that sends the messages out. If you tell, who, whoever tells me what is that interface name, I'm gonna give you the book. So what is the interface name that we use to send the message out? Save message, my friend. We, that's yours, my friend. Okay, yeah. It's called safe message. So with safe message is the one interface that we use to send it out. Okay. So now here, I need a volunteer that wants to play a role as an attacker. So that, uh, what? Don't worry. I'm just want you to receive the message. So I want to send this message to someone outside. If there is no volunteers, I can do it in myself. But I mean. Is there any volunteer? Okay, my friend, come over, please. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use, can you type your, your phone? Yeah, 
so what we're gonna do here is just we're gonna type a phone, right? This is obviously behind the scenes automated, is the attacker's phone, but here we're gonna uh, use his phone. So these messages that we just saw there are gonna be sent out. It's just basically uh, what we're doing. It's just like the final step on this uh, whole thing. Okay, so. Wait a second. I think I need to remove this guys. I just need to, this is escaping thing. I remember that it's JSON thing, so it's just, we need to escape it, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so can you type it here, my friend? Uh, here, one second. Yeah, right there, please. Okay. Nobody call me. <laughs> Okay, so I think it needs to have one, I guess. But anyways, so we have this this phone. What's your name, buddy? Jeremy. Jeremy. So we have the phone of uh, Jeremy is going to be the attacker right now. So we are going we're just going to execute this so that you guys can see uh, how it looks like the messages out. Uh, just give me one second. This okay. Okay, so let's execute that command. Let me see if that works. So, okay, so this is just, uh, first of all, we're just passing the messages. Here you can see in a more easier way the, the, the phones. And, <clears throat> and so, anyways, so here is the phones that we got information here, information here, information here, right? So, this, you don't believe that this guy is just a friend that really loves me. And actually, it's my phone, so it was just me, okay? So then, we're gonna send this message out, okay, to the phone that we just decided. So in order to do that, as my friend uh, tell us, uh, we're gonna use a different interface, right? As you remember. So we're gonna go to the safe message interface. That safe message interface is gonna allow us to send the message out, and it's gonna be sending the message out to this phone, which is the phone of, of Jeremy. So Jeremy, can you just stand here? This is like a magic act, my friend, you know? So just do like this. Like the phone, like, no, you don't need to turn it on. Just put it like this. If, don't see if it receives the, the message. Uh, you know, the, the, the demo doesn't work, so don't worry, guys. <laughs> okay, I send the message. Let's see. Oh, there. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. Mm, I told you guys. Well, it's in the outbox. Actually, the, the, the command works, but yeah, I don't know. Let me try another phone here also, yeah, since we're here. Uh, six, this thing. It's, it's right away. I think there is some messaging here going on. Six, three, zero, eight, four, nine, zero, six. Okay, that's, that's my phone. Then let's see. Execute. Well, I put the one. Uh, plus one? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, Mexico. But you didn't. No, but it's that way. But I think, yeah, because I was not also receiving messages, so I don't know, maybe it's something. What happens if you take the plus one out of both? Without one? Without one. Okay. Yeah, let's try that. And let me just grab again your one second. Okay, let's try that. Actually, I, I don't recall how I, I tested it, but uh, yeah, let's try that. Copy. Okay. So you, yeah, let's try to get the, to remove the plus only, right? Okay, let's try, let's try that. Light. 
let's try that. It's not going to work. Yeah. Because I tested, I think I tested it without that, and it works, so. Do we have connection? Well, there is something weird with the, yes. Just let me quickly check here uh, if I am um, connected properly. Connected, yes. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's active. Yeah. No, I don't think it's working. Let's do something, man. If you receive it later during the day, tweet it, please. Yes. <laughs> so that these guys. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with the communication. Uh, but actually, I have a demo video here at the end. Um, but we do, this is exactly the same. Let me check here. Uh, no, no, but this is the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So yeah, for some reason, it didn't send the message out. What is it? This, uh, so, sorry guys for that last one. I don't know what, why it's not uh, working, but well, anyways, that was the last step. So we steal the messages and then we just call the save message and then the messages are going out uh, to whoever uh, is the destination uh, address. But I also tried with mine and it didn't, it, I didn't receive anything. So, so there is something, oh wait, no, I received it actually. Yeah, you didn't saw the pop up there? Yeah. No, I If I receive the messages, the messages should be, should be here in the, in the info camera because I sent it to me also. Okay, guys, so sorry for that communication there, but uh, it was the last step. Uh, and just some takeaways uh, here. Hopefully, I'm going to connect it outside. We'll see if, if that sends the final message. Uh, I received the message here, but for some reason, it's not popping up there. But anyway, so uh, final recommendations. Hopefully, what, with this talk, I hope that uh, the recalls from the, from the cars they can take more seriously uh, the fact that we can infect cars because uh, I think that uh, this kind of scenarios is real and that can happen and I don't think that it's gonna, th there is gonna be a problem. So there's, there's gonna be, do the last, last, um, the last um, demo. Can you send a message? Uh, we're gonna send a message now outside. I'm gonna send a message, uh, let's say here is the attacker, he's gonna send a message to my phone, and then uh, my phone is gonna uh, receive the message, which is the rat inside, and it's gonna do some actions in the, in the infotainment. So let, let's try that one as, as the final um, example. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's sent out and let me just do something quickly. 
So, yeah, guys, for some reason, it's not working the SMS, SMS messages in this room for some reason. But anyway, so I apologize with that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much to Alan Mont. John, thank you, guys. John, Ma, John McMaster. Uh, Josh Gomez uh, for your work. And obviously, that's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>